are speaking with New York Times bestselling author Peter Larangus about the fourth installment in his Seven Wonders series, The Curse of the King. Thank you so much for joining us today, Peter. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. So what secrets can you share about The Curse of the King? Well, if I, you know, I've got to be very careful about this because my publisher is standing right outside the door with a cane and can pull me out if I get too much into it. But what I can tell you is at the end of book three, right, we have this unbelievably impossible problem. We've got four characters, Jack, Ali, Cass, and Marco, each of whom have this condition. They've inherited from a prince who escaped the sinking of the continent of Atlantis. Inside of each one of them, they have a condition that will take whatever they're good at and turn it into this awesome superpower. The problem is they've got a year to live because anyone who's ever had this condition has never lived past the age of 14 and they're all 13. And they found a cure on this island where an institute has been set up to study them. And what the cure is, they've got to find seven relics or loculi that have been hidden in the seven wonders of the ancient world if they find these relics and bring them back to this island, they'll be cured, they'll live long lives, and they'll also save the world. So in the first three books, they've been through all kinds of adventures, they've seen all kinds of crazy mythological creatures, they've been to Greece, they've been, to, they've been in a time rift and seen the ancient civilization of Babylon, and they've had a defection of one of the four friends, and by the end of book three, one of the seven loculi has been destroyed. So all bets are off. And that's the job I had when I started book four, was to figure that one out. So at the beginning of book four, all hope is lost, but because it's an entire book, they found out something that's going to save this adventure, and I can't really tell you what it is. So um, why, why are young readers so excited to read about what happens next for Jack and his friends? Well, I think part, you know, part of it, I think, is because we all wish that we could have these superpowers. And at the same time, we're all looking for a connection between ourselves and the wider world. And in this case, the, the way that they can save their lives also involves the fate of the entire Earth. And I think when you're a kid, everything is that important, right? I mean, everything is, you know, is, is, is of the greatest importance that you could possibly imagine because that's what your lives are all about. You're so, you're so inside your own minds and inside your own hearts. And I, I don't, I, you know, I can never know exactly what it is about a book that makes it popular for kids. I can just give it my all and hope that it connects somehow. And the, the great, you know, the great pleasure for me is that lo and behold, the series has, has caught hold and uh, I'm, I feel like the luckiest guy in the world. You're definitely doing something right because the books are popular and kids do love them. But you're also a man of many talents. Uh, you're a biochemist, an actor, and an <laughs> author of over of 165 books. How do you do it? Well, not all at the same time. Uh, <laughs> when I was, uh, the biochemistry part came in college because uh, I was interested in it, uh, and I realized that uh, you know I wasn't going to use it because I, I wasn't really cut out to be a doctor. I'm not quite that good at it. Um, and at some point, I had to realize when I was an adult, what is it? What is it that I want to do? We all face this, right? And for me, it really was it really was the writing. So I kind of went through different phases. You know, I, I, I went the science phase when I was in college, and then after college I thought, you know, what I really want to do is perform. So I did a Broadway show, and I did a lot of theater all around the country, and in between acting jobs was when I really went back to the thing that I wanted to do most of all, which was to write, and then before long that took off, and I realized, okay, I've got to do one thing. I want to do one thing really well, as opposed to several things, you know, mediocrely. And uh, so I put my eggs in that basket, and ever since then I've never looked back, and I've been really grateful for that. Oh, thank you. Uh, lastly, where should young readers and parents who are reading those books as well go to learn a little bit more about the series? Well, we have a website that we've set up just for the series. It's called sevenwondersbooks.com. Uh, and you know, most people don't know what the seven wonders of the ancient world are. People kind of guess all over the place. So you have an interactive map where we have all of the seven wonders. You can learn all about them. I've actually cut one video for each of the seven wonders where I talk about them and what they mean to me. Uh, and um, you can learn about the books, you can learn about the characters. Also, at my own personal website, peterlarangis.com, uh, you can not only learn about the books, but also kids can communicate with me through my guest book. I answer every single question that any reader wants to ask. Wonderful. Thank you again so much, and have a wonderful day. Thanks. You too.